Overhead athletes are a very unique beast. Okay, we have pitchers, we have volleyball players, we have swimmers, we have water polo players. You know, these just name a few overhead athletes that we always are seeing here at CORE. We're seeing them with injuries, we're seeing them with pre-injuries or risk factors for injuries. Okay, one thing that a lot of these athletes do have is a lot of shoulder range of motion. However, during high periods of training, this range of motion can actually change. Okay, research really shows that if an athlete does their sport, as they're maturing, as their bones are adapting, they're gonna be able to do the range of motions for the demand of their sport. Okay, a lot of the studies have been in baseball players and what they'll show is the humerus here, our upper arm, we have our humerus, okay, sitting right in the glenoid or the shoulder blade, and that this arm will actually rotate and develop, the, uh, the um, humerus will actually rotate and develop into this position, allowing you to do more range of motion or to go through your sport specific range of motion. However, this range of motion is a very dynamic range, okay? If you're a pitcher, you go through 100 pitches, okay? What you're gonna be doing, you're gonna have uh, some changes in your range of motion, and you're gonna actually lack internal rotation through all these pitches that you're doing. Because when you're throwing a ball, or doing any of these other overhead sports, you know, you're locking in your core, really chucking the ball 105 miles per hour. Chris Barber knows what I'm talking about. You're throwing that ball over and over. This muscle in the back here is gonna adaptively shorten Okay, just like a rubber band, you stretch it and it bounces back nice and tight. You have those rubber bands that have a little bit of wear and tear. They're getting very rigid in there. Okay, when they're rigid, they're not going to allow you to go through that range of motion. So there's a lot of methods to help restore internal rotation. Because what happens if we're starting to throw and throw and we're losing this internal rotation out our shoulder, what we're going to do? We're going to compensate. Athletes are built to cheat. They're built to compensate. So what you're going to be doing and you're going to be seeing with your athletes, and whether you're in the pool, throwing a ball, whatever, you start to do this. If you're lacking that internal rotation range of motion, the shoulder blade's going to start coming in. The elbow's going to start coming in. You know, the shoulder blade's going to start elevating and also abducting. So when someone tries to rotate in here, if they don't have all this range, say they're only to here, they're going to compensate and get that form to that position. Okay, like I said, extra stress on the shoulder, extra stress on the elbow. If we start doing all these goofy motions at our shoulder blade, boom, okay, instability. Look at my shoulder blade, okay, popping down here. Okay, the shoulder blade's popping down this end, good. Okay, anterior stability there. Also, what it's going to be doing is closing off that space of our glenohumeral joint, causing impingement, bump, 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 rubbing, rubbing, rubbing on that supraspinatus, that rotator cuff. You're going to piss it off, make pain, make injury and pair performance, not good, okay? If we think about a pitcher, if we're starting to have a, a lack of internal rotation here at our shoulder, we're gonna put more stress on, what's this right here? Oh, Tommy John, okay, our MCL at our elbow, okay? Rest in peace, Mr. Job, the creator, Dr. Job, the creator of the of Tommy John surgery, okay? Just passed away a few days ago, okay? This guy saved a lot of careers that could have been prevented if athletes maybe had more internal rotation at their shoulder opposed to compensating on this elbow, causing all this stress on the elbow, okay? So what can we do, okay? That's gonna be a few part series here. We're gonna be going over a few different internal rotation um, resolvers or areas that help improve internal rotation, okay? This is just a dynamic mobility today where an athlete can kind of assess how much true range of motion they have at the shoulder blade, and then you can assess and then try and push it a little bit, okay? Through dynamic activity, dynamic motions. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a wall somewhere where you can really block your shoulder blade. Okay, so I'm kind of going at this angle here. My shoulder blade is being blocked by this pillar. Okay, then what I'm doing, I'm going to have my hand, the palm of my hand right against my shoulder here. Okay, or my humerus, the head of the humerus. My other hand is going to be behind it. And then what I'm just going to do is rotate my hand in until I start to feel, boom, the shoulder rotating in or my hand come off or the shoulder come off my hand in the back okay so if I'm doing this here I'm holding here I'm rotating now oh I'm already feeling it come off in the back a little bit so this is how much internal rotation I have on this stuff how much true internal rotation at my glenohumeral joint I have oh I'm getting tongue tied here okay a little too much talking all right so I'm rotating in here I'm feeling it I can go more look at that but oh look what's popping forward here okay all these adaptations my shoulder blade is really glunking all around in there, causing excessive risk of injury, extra rubbing. So I'm holding here, back, and then I'm just rotating down. Oh, feeling it pop off a little in the back. So I don't have a lot here, okay? 
Is this how much I need to swim to get my high, early vertical form, get 90 degrees? No. Is this how much? Is this where I want my ball trajectory? Man, I'll be throwing over the pitcher's head every time. That's probably not good. Okay. All right, so this is just our assessment here. That can also be done just into a dynamic warm-up, dynamic mobility exercise against the wall, trying to go a little bit further each time. But once again, I'm not cheating, not compensating. Compensations are what athletes do. They're built to cheat. Okay, we want to make sure we're restoring them after all the demands of training so they're able to do these uh, motions safely, properly, for greater athletic performance. All right, this is our core vid of the day.